The goodies in this parcel should facilitate wrapping up a few loose ends left in previous videos, as well as provide the opportunity to introduce YouTube to a new retro product. So the Scion Adventure Part 4 begins with a multiple unwrapping of a package from Scion X, one of the last remaining Scion retailers. Postage to Australia is a killer, but it still works out a little bit cheaper for me to get most of this stuff from Scion X than from eBay. We'll look at the PC card modem adapter last, but that's the new product, which I think is exclusive uh, in this video for YouTube. Um, but firstly, Street Planner Millennium Edition for London, which is different from the GPS mapping product uh, that I've looked at in previous videos. And this pen is just a, a posh stylus, the Titan, uh, which is a company original and um, is just a replacement for the standard stylus. The Titan is all metal though, so for those jet setters who are out to impress. Uh, the GPS mapping software CD looks to have CD rot, but uh, it's so uniform I think that's just uh, an artifact pattern of the label side of the CD. And uh, the back of the CD shows the area of map coverage. This map product is limited to London and that's how it differs from a map product demonstrated in a previous video. The seemingly more comprehensive route planner software covers all of the UK, but it lacks minor street detail which I'm hoping will be provided by the London product, at least for the map coverage area that it does support. We're up to one of the loose ends I was talking about left in the previous telephony video where I showed a back-to-back -back modem connection, but no actual file transfer because I knew I'd be doing one anyway. So here it is, one way to install the GPS program is to copy over uh, five or so installation files. Uh, the first two of which I used a modem back-to-back -back and then went onto a null modem cable because the modems are slower. In addition to the USB to serial converter, I got a laptop dock that includes an RS-232 serial port as well. And that went fine too with a very plain wired null modem cable. Now, because I got a broken Scion with working guts, I can use the backlight of another broken laptop. I didn't do it, yes I did. Um, to backlight the display of the Scion to make the best ever seen video recording of the screen. The GPS simulator topic of previous videos will be used as before to play back GPX track logs as if it was a GPS device. But in this much more spectacular fashion, ha ha ha. And I'm glad I did it for this product. We have superior map data with minor street detail and a superior vector mapping GPS program. The first thing to jump out at me was that the user's position doesn't have to be in the center of the screen. It's allowed to wander away a little bit so that the map doesn't have to be redrawn for every update of the user's position. The biggest surprise though was point rotation, as you can see on that roundabout. Um, but that wasn't included in the route planner program at all, which was quite a surprise. Again, the rotation isn't happening for every update of the user's position. That would be a CPU intensive operation rotating all those points. And that was the second loose end. I wasn't really happy with the track log playback videos with uh, some street data missing, so it looked like my vehicle was just moving around in space. I guess it's time to reveal the one last feature of GPS Simulator, which is that it was built to serve a purpose. And the crux of the matter, the PC card modem adapter. So this one is an unboxing video wrapped up in an unwrapping video, but this doesn't actually wrap anything up. This is an introduction of a new thing. The PC card modem adapter, also known as PCMCIA, uh, comes with what seems to be the standard Scion two-page English <laughs> manual and the unit itself. So this is supposed to be new old stock. Not really sure about that. What is new old stock? As a, yeah, I don't know. One of these things I admire and will use once to make the video and be happy I did it, but it'll end up on a shelf gathering dust. The enclosure finish is a rubberized coating similar to the IBM ThinkPads and ruggedized industrial equipment. I've gone to insert the four AA batteries and found that one of the hinges for one of the battery flaps is broken so now it's a new used 
modem adapter with a broken part. The collector side of me isn't too happy when the term new is used loosely. That means not used. It could mean old. The broken hinge in combination with the foam inside the battery compartment gives the whole device one sloppy foot. But anyway, the experimenter side of me keeps the video going. A permanently attached cable connects the device to the Scion PDA serial port. A cable connects the PCM-CIA card modem itself to the telephone wall jack. Because I demonstrated a file transfer recently, I've decided this time to send a fax. And that's made easy with a fax test number in Australia provided by Telstra, um, a service where you can send a fax to a service number and it will automatically return the fax uh, to the same number along with the fax report. Ah, uh, didn't work though. <laughs> I had to come to uh, a friend's house to do this because he's still got a plain old telephone line and that's pretty rare in Australia. They're due to all be phased out very soon. Although it appears that fax was sent successfully, it apparently wasn't. The fax test service does return a report page, but no fax for the page that was sent. Although the modem can apparently establish a connection, it appears to be silent when it comes to sending any data. For another attempt at sending a two-page fax, the Scion clapped out with an error after sending the first. In a very recent video on my channel involving telephony, I used this travel modem to connect back to back with my IBM ThinkPad modem. And when this was replaced with the PC card modem adapter, things went downhill. This is the connectant dial-up modem in question from a Lenovo ThinkPad. Since I took a look inside, I might as well show you the PCB out of the PC card modem adapter. There's not much to see, most of it is covered by the card socket. I do have multiple card modems and multiple cables to connect them to the phone line. I initially suspected something was wrong with the card modem adapter, but then uh, it dawned on me that my adapter uh, that I've been using for my own uh, communications with modem back to back previously only used a 9 volt battery and I remembered the PCB on the analog side of the modem was isolated uh, and decided to ramp up the voltage a little closer to that of a real phone network which is 48 volts but not quite there I've used two batteries to get a 24 volt supply from here I can connect the PC card modem back to back with the ThinkPad just as in the last video about telephony. This time I'll show a file transfer from the Scion's perspective. The actual file transfer is seriously sped up, it's about 18 times the speed that I'm showing in the video and I'm transferring a program called Solon, which is called Charityware. The author wishes for you to make a donation in order to use it. I doubt I'll be using it though, just playing with it and shooting it for a video. Uh, the Sol Luna, I presume, is a contraction for Solar Luna. This is a graphic astronomy calculator, I presume a labour of love because it looks to have seen a great deal of development over time. I love utilities and it's as good a program as any to show off with the backlit display. And here we have a, a world map with grey lines, so uh, the amateur radio guys will like that. The Aruri view takes quite a long time to render, so I've sped that one up a bit. My fiddling with the pen there, I haven't realised while recording this that the program isn't responsive while it's rendering, uh, but it does get it done, so I presume these two windows are split between the inner and outer planets. And then the globe view, which I think is really cool. Um, very nice vectorised map uh, presented on a, a 2D spherical globe. <laughs> very nice. Uh, this has the default location set, but it wouldn't matter because this is a view of the Earth from the Moon. And uh, you can change that uh, viewing perspective to the Sun and perhaps other locations. I haven't really checked. And this segment demonstrates detailed information panels on selected objects, starting with the moon and then the sun. And since Mars has been in the news lately, I've selected it as well. Maybe it would have been a good idea to take this out for the eclipse, which I was out in the bush to view. I just didn't have any good photography equipment to make it worth taking photos. 
For each selected object, you've got rise and set times. It looks like altitude and azimuth, distance from the Earth, and a bunch of other information. Bear in mind my location, the date, and the time are all incorrectly set, so the information given here might be rubbish, it's just a demonstration. And with that, I'll end this video. There might end up being a link in the description if I get a fax working. Other than that, bye for now.